power distribution modules or power distribution units, whatever you want to refer to them as, these units are becoming increasingly popular in the aftermarket automotive electronics world. One of the reasons being that these units have come down in price significantly over the last few years, meaning that they are now becoming more affordable to average enthusiasts. Now we're going to set up here and go through a bench test of an output that we're using just to see how we can confirm the functionality of one of these outputs. This time we'll be looking at an electronic handbrake assembly. However, before we do that, just for those who maybe haven't heard of power distribution modules before, I'll quickly go over what they actually are. And in simple terms, it just allows us to remove the fuses and relays that we'd normally require in our automotive wiring. The relays in particular are used to provide a way of switching a high current output, maybe to a fuel pump or a thermofan for just a couple of examples, using a low current switch. So so this could be a mechanical switch on our dash, but more usually that would come from an auxiliary output from our ECU. And the problem is that the ECU itself isn't capable of switching the relatively high current, perhaps 12 to 14 amps that some fuel pumps would draw. So the relay acts as a, a go-between there, allowing that high current flow from the battery through a fuse, through the relay, and then finally to our fan or our fuel pump or whatever we're powering. Now, there's nothing specifically wrong with that system, but the wiring is relatively complex and the fusing is also problematic. The reason I say that is because if our fuse blows, then the only way of getting that output, our fuel pump for example, back up and running, is to physically replace the fuse. Particularly if you're talking about a race car application, that might leave you stranded on the side of the racetrack. Power distribution modules handle this in a much more sophisticated way. First of all, as I mentioned, we're getting rid of relays in favour of solid state electronics. Now these are also much more reliable than relays. But the advantage really is in how we function those outputs. So first of all, while we still can wire up a conventional switch and have that sitting up on the dashboard, these days we're much more likely to use messages being sent via CAN. These could come from an ECU or a dash or the range of relatively popular CAN keypads dramatically simplifying our wiring and the reason I say that is with each switch, each mechanical switch that we would need, we need to run two wires to that switch. So if we've got eight switches for example, there's potentially 16 individual wires that are going to be running between our relays and our dashboard. On the other hand with a CAN keypad that only requires four wires and we can have up to 15 or more keys on one particular keypad. So the four wires are 12 volts in earth to physically power the keypad and then a simple high and low CAN bus, CAN high and CAN low, and that goes between the keypad and our power distribution module. Then the key presses and the status of the outputs are then all communicated backwards and forwards with CAN messages. Okay, that's all well and good and is just really a refresher on power distribution modules in general. One of the common questions we get asked is, how do I set up a PDM to do a particular function? Maybe that's your windscreen wipers or or maybe it's something a little bit more complex such as a anti-stall function in a race car. And that's really where bench testing comes in. Essentially making up a very simple quick and dirty harness like we've got here to allow us to actually set up and test a particular function and make sure it works exactly how we expect. What we're going to look at here is how we can control an Audi electric handbrake mechanism. And before we go too far, I'll just cover off the electronics and the complexities that are involved with this particular configuration, which on face value does seem relatively simple. Uh, the unit we're talking about here or using here is an Audi electric handbrake, and this is being installed on the back of a Toyota FJ40 off-road vehicle. And we've converted that from factory drum brake to disc brake, and that creates a few complexities around incorporating the 
factory mechanical cable driven handbrake assembly. Uh, we decided that the neatest solution here was to do away with that and go with the electric handbrake and I will just mention here that absolutely this is not the cheapest way of achieving this. It requires as we'll find quite a lot of reasonably expensive electronics and if cost saving was your priority this would not be the way to go. However the reality is that cost isn't always the main driver with our decisions and particularly with the case of this vehicle the majority of the electronics were already being installed so the extra requirements to drive the handbrake wasn't actually a big consideration. Alright let's talk about the complexities of this setup. So I've got our Audi, Audi electric handbrake in. This is a simple handbrake that incorporates a normal hydraulic pressure driven piston as well as a servo motor that can drive the handbrake on and off. It is a two-wire device and the complexity here is that when the handbrake is engaged one of the two wires is driven to 12 volts and the other to earth. On the other hand when we disengage the handbrake that is reversed. Uh, we end up with 12 volts going to the opposite wire and the wire that did have 12 volts becomes ground. So that allows us to drive that servo motor in either direction. Now this creates straight away a complexity with our MoTeC PDM32 which is our power distribution module for this project because the outputs from this power distribution module uh, doesn't actually incorporate half bridge outputs. Uh, each of those outputs will only go to 12 volts when it is active. So we can't switch polarity which is what this needs. Now I will mention that yes there are some power distribution modules on the market that include half bridge outputs as well as conventional outputs which would allow this to be driven directly. And that's one of the things you do need to keep in mind when you are considering the purchase of a particular unit making sure that you first of all understand how you're going to be driving the outputs and then choose a device that's going to be appropriate for those outputs. In Motec's defense I will say that uh, including half bridge outputs on a power distribution module is certainly not the norm albeit as I mentioned yes there are models out there that do. We'll probably see more of this coming in the future as well. Okay so that's the electric motor for the handbrake and the fact is at this stage we cannot drive it from our PDM. The other issue though is that we also need to understand how the electric handbrake is functioned and this usually involves a little bit of digging into how the OE manufacturer did this. We found that Audi use a current target so when the handbrake is engaged the handbrake will be driven in the on position until it reaches a certain current. In this case it's about 18 amps. This is important because it ensures that we've always got a consistent amount of clamp from the handbrake. Essentially you could look at it like the handbrake or the current drive I should say from the handbrake motor increases the more pressure is applied uh, onto the brake pad. So by targeting a specific current we're always getting or ensuring that the handbrake is applying the correct amount of clamp load. Okay so the plus side is that our power distribution module is able to monitor current. The downside of course is we already know we can't drive it directly. How we're going to solve this requires two more pieces of electronics. First of all we have a MoTeC dual half bridge controller. So this includes as its name suggests two half bridge outputs. We supply power to it, we can control it uh, using our dash which I'll talk about in a second and then this allows us to either drive two servo motors in a single direction, we can pulse width modulate it to control their speed or really what we're interested in is it allows us to drive a single servo motor forwards or backwards. So that's our solution there to actually be able to do the polarity swapping to drive our motor on and off. Remember though we still need to do this current targeting. So what we conventionally do with our dual half bridge controller is provide direct battery power to it. Instead what we're going to do is we're going to provide the power to our half bridge controller from our power distribution module. That then allows us to indirectly measure the current on those outputs from the PDM to the dual half bridge controller which of course is going to be the same as the current being drawn by the handbrake. So that allows us to do our current monitoring. So we're getting close. 
The problem is we can't directly control our DHB unit from our PDM, so we're using another piece of electronics to do some functions there, which is our MoTeC C127 dash. All right, things are getting a little bit complex, but stick with me here and we'll see how all of this comes together. The beauty of the PDM is that we are sending messages between the PDM and the dash via our CAN bus. This means that the dash is able to monitor the current that is being provided to the dual half-bridge controller. And what we're doing is using a table inside of the uh, MoTeC C127 dash to target our current target that we want to achieve. On the other hand, the MoTeC dash, we're using two of the auxiliary output channels to control the dual half bridge controller. So how this essentially works is we've got a wired switch in this case for our bench test. Uh, ultimately we would use a CAN keypad for this, but just for a quick test here on the bench, this is a nice simple way of doing it. That's to a digital input on the PDM, that's triggering our handbrake on and off. When we switch the handbrake to the engaged position, what's going to happen is that the status of that input to the PDM is also sent to the MoTeC dash via a CAN message. What the dash will then do is decide what to do with the dual half bridge controller. When we switch the handbrake on, what it's going to do is provide an output triggering the on position for the dual half bridge controller and then engaging the handbrake and driving that servo motor. But remember, we also needed our current limit. So we've got the current coming through to the dash, we're also using that as a user condition and when the current exceeds our preset limit, what will happen is that the dash will then stop driving the handbrake. So basically in the PDM, we are using that to provide power to the dual half bridge controller. We're using it to drive the handbrake into the on position for three seconds when it's triggered and it won't drive for that full three seconds, but depending on whereabouts the handbrake is in its cycle, uh, we may need to drive it for a reasonable period of time. So it's basically using two limiting factors. It'll drive for three seconds, or until our current reaches our target. Remembering we're trying to target around about 18 amps. On the other hand, when we drive the handbrake off, we don't really need to be worried about current. The current drawer is initially a little high, but it's very easy to disengage the handbrake, so that drops away pretty quickly. So we're only driving it for a set period of time, which is around one second. And that means that we're backed off enough to provide no drag on the brake pads, uh, but we're still sitting there ready to re-engage. Okay, so again, I know it is a little bit complex, but let's dive into the actual electronics in the laptop and we'll see how this all works. First of all, in our input pins over here, we can see we've only got a very simple configuration. We're only testing our one particular function. So we've got A2, our auxiliary input two, uh, which is set up at the moment. And we can see we've given that a channel name, which is handbrake on. And you can see that that is active when it's low. So essentially when that switches to ground, it will be active. So that's our trigger for the whole system. Remembering that particular channel, the status of A2 there is what's also being set through to our C127 dash. Let's have a look at our output pins here. And again, very basic, we've only got our two outputs for our handbrake being run at the moment. So we can see that those are on uh, output nine and 10. We are paralleling these so that we have sufficient current handling capability. Uh, so these will allow up to 10 amps per output and we can see that that's exactly what I've got that set up to be. Uh, these are paralleled so essentially they're both doing exactly the same thing. So we'll just dive into one of these and the condition with how this will work uh, is that it will provide handbrake power. So that's power to the dual half bridge controller. That's the name of the channel and it will do that under these conditions. So this is a pulse so when the handbrake on signal comes in it will on the rising edge trigger this for three seconds so that's in the engage mode on the other hand on the falling edge uh, we will end up driving it for one second so that's the disengage mode so remember that's the first part of this process we still aren't doing anything with the actual current handling and we're not actually controlling the handbrake itself all of that is doing, the PDM is simply providing the power to our dual half bridge controller, which then in turn also allows us to monitor the current draw from the handbrake. All right, 
that's pretty simple. Let's jump into our C127 dash and we'll see how all of this works. So first of all, if we go to our auxiliary output pins, we can see we've got two outputs and these are being sent out to that dual half bridge controller or they're wired, I should say, these aren't CAN messages to our dual half bridge controller. Uh, we've got a simple setup here. Uh, one will become active when our handbrake is on and the other will be active when our handbrake is off pretty straightforward but we're still not doing anything about our current handling capabilities. Let's go into our calculations here and our user conditions. I've got a bunch set up here which I want you to ignore, we're really only interested in these three at the bottom here. So let's have a quick look at our handbrake on. Alright so the handbrake on channel will become true when first of all PDM input state 1 is true, so that is our switch, that's our handbrake signal, signal going into the PDM, you remember I said that that was being transferred through to the C127 dash as a CAN message. So first of all when that's true, and secondly, and this is the important bit, when our HB or handbrake current limit equals 0. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. When we haven't reached our current limit, which we'll look at in a second, and the handbrake switch is active, we're going to be true on that particular condition. Close that one down. Handbrake off is essentially the same. Uh, this case, our PDM state, PDM input to state is zero. In other words, it's off. We don't need to worry about current handling in this particular condition though, remember that's not important here. Uh, we're only going to be driving this for a set period of time. The important part here is our handbrake current limit, we'll open that up, and we can see here we are monitoring our PDM output 9 current and in this case I've got it actually set up, there's a little interesting part here which we'll go over, uh, it is equal to or over 5 amps for a tenth of a second. Now let's just break that down, you remember I said that uh, the Audi handbrake has functioned to target 18 amps and 5 amps doesn't sound anything like 18 amps but we need to understand a little bit more about what's going on. First of all you'll remember that I'm paralleling the two outputs, so that's 5 amps on one channel. Within reason it's fair to assume that if the two paralleled outputs, if one of them is drawing 5 amps, we're probably going to have pretty much exactly the same on the other, so that's 10 amps. Still not at our 18, but there's a reason for that. There is a relatively slow communication rate here between the PDM and the dash in terms of the current, so we're not sending this at a very high rate. So in order to actually arrive at approximately 18 amps, I found that setting a target of what, it, what ultimately is 10 amps uh, worked out to be about right. Now it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of flexibility in here, it might not be 18 amps every time, but we're within about plus and minus half an amp, which I'm absolutely fine with. The other aspect there is I've got that delay in there of 0.1 of a second when we first bench tested this, the inrush current when we first activated the handbrake uh, was enough to trigger that 10 amp target, so I just put in a small delay there, it's a roundabout way of getting us through that inrush current which only lasts for a tenth of a second or obviously less. Okay so that is our, our output there which will activate and the other thing is because once that's activated it's going to stay active, uh, we are deactivating it when our PDM input to state equals zero, so in other words when we turn the handbrake off it resets or deactivates our handbrake current limit. Okay again I accept this is a relatively complex way of getting a handbrake to work and again absolutely not the cheapest and easiest solution but it is an effective way of getting it done and sometimes you will be working with electronics which require a little bit of out of the box thinking. The other thing I want to mention here is that this is not a black and white this is the only way of making this particular unit work. There's a variety of different ways we could have achieved this aim, this just happens to be the one that I'm demonstrating, so don't, don't for a minute think that this is the absolute only way that we could have got this result. So anyway, let's have a, a look now at what happens, so we have our handbrake at the moment in the off position, and we'll switch our switch, and we hear the motor drive for a second or so, and then you can hear it load up, and then it reaches the current limit and it switches off. We'll deactivate it now, and remember no current limit in that situation, it's simply uh, driving into the off position and that's just time based. Switch it on again, 
and that's how the system works. Now we can get a little bit more involved here. So let's bring up our channels here in our C127 dash. And what we'll do is we'll cycle through to the ones that we're interested in here. Obviously a lot of information in here that is irrelevant. And uh, first of all, we've got handbrake off and handbrake on. So those are our statuses there and our handbrake current limit. Now you can see at the moment that handbrake current limit is in, in value one. In other words, it's active. Uh, we've just turned the handbrake on. It's driven until it's reached that 10 amp target and it's triggered and that's cut the output to our dual half bridge controller. So what we're going to do is turn the handbrake off and what I'll get you to do is just watch what happens to the values here. Uh, when I turn the handbrake off, first of all, we're going to see the handbrake off uh, status go from zero to one. And at the same time, it's going to reset that handbrake current limit. So let's do that now. So see that reverse, our handbrake off is still true. We'll now switch our handbrake back on and you'll watch the handbrake on go between zero and one. And shortly after you'll see that handbrake current limit come in as well. So let's have a look at that now. There we go, so we see our handbrake current limit hit one and that deactivates the handbrake. All right, so hopefully at this point you've got a, a pretty good understanding of what's going on in a relatively complex setup but to go one step further let's pull some logging now and we'll actually have a look at what's going on with our handbrake when we function that all right we've got some logging downloaded out of the c127 dash and obviously this isn't what we'd normally use the c127 dash for but it is a really good way of validating exactly what's going on with our pdm so let's have a look here so first of all we've got our pdm input state for input two remembering that's obviously our handbrake on and off switch so we can see that at this point here the handbrake was triggered on and at this point here it was triggered off We've then got our next channel here, which is our handbrake current. Now I'm actually doing this as a math channel, remembering that there are two channels here and we want to add them up. So this is the actual raw output from the PDM over CAN to the dash for output 9 and output 10. Those were the two channels we'd paralleled in order to drive the handbrake. And then just for interest sake below, we've got our PDM total current. Uh, just while we're looking at this, you can also see the sort of square nature of this output. And this is an indication of the uh, rate at which the data is being transmitted across to the dash. So no matter what rate we actually log at in the dash, that's not going to help and that's again why I said that we're targeting a slightly lower current than what we're achieving. Anyway, looking at what happens here is we trigger the handbrake on and we go from position zero to position one on that switch. We can see that initially we have a really high inrush current, which is what I was talking about needing to get around. We're almost pulling 20 amps, but only for a really brief instant. It drops away and this point portion through here is uh, where the handbrake is just starting to drive the piston up against the pad so there's relatively little current uh, being drawn in this particular period under one amp. Then we can see the current starting to ramp up as the piston pushes harder against the pads and we can see at this point here which is where our handbrake current limit is triggered we're actually pulling pretty much right on our target 17.4 amps so close enough and we could always tweak that 10 amp target or 5 amp target uh, as we see fit in order to just fine tune that and get exactly where we want good enough for our purposes of our demonstration though so this break the, at this point the current uh, obviously drops back down to zero because the current limit has been triggered in the dash. The output to the dual half bridge controller is cut off, so it's not doing anything. And at this point here, uh, we switch the handbrake back off. We can see that our current jumps up a little bit and in this case uh, our peak current draw is around about 8 amps so much much lower than what we saw putting the handbrake on and we can also see that the current drops down quite quickly and at this point here uh, we've got past our timer of one second and our handbrake function is complete. By bench testing this function it just gives us the 
confidence that first of all, uh, we've got a strategy that will work. And again, there's no single way that we could have achieved this or gone about achieving this, but it gives us the confidence that at least when we commit to the wiring, we know that once we get it in the vehicle, it is going to work as intended. In some instances, we may find that we simply can't get a solution that's suitable, and we may have to either go with a different hardware solution uh, or potentially rethink the entire way we're going about this. Irrespective though, it's always good to have the confidence before you commit to the wiring that everything is going to work once installed exactly how you expected. Now obviously that is just one function that you can use a power distribution module for. It's a fairly obscure function but really the purpose of this video was just to show you the flexibility with aftermarket electronics, power distribution modules and CAN. You can essentially use these functions and electronics to suit your own requirements. Essentially your imagination is the only limiting factor. If you are interested in learning more about power distribution modules, the installation, configuration and setup of these units, then we do offer a full course that covers this and you'll find a link in the description.